X-Men, the animated series, season one, episode one, Night of the Sentinels, part one. So, I intend to do one of these episodes per day. Uh, if you click in the description box of this video, there's going to be a playlist where every single day the, the most recent video I've done on the most recent episode will be in that playlist. Uh, you know, if for some reason you don't want to subscribe, I don't know why you wouldn't want to, but, you know, hypothetically, maybe you don't want, maybe there's a, a witch's curse preventing you. You know, you can save that playlist, uh, you know, unless you're watching this at some point in the future, whether that feature has been removed for some reason. You can save that playlist and you'll get, you know, you, yeah, it'll, it'll pop to the top of your playlists in the feed whenever a new video comes up. And, you know, if you don't want to watch every single video, if you just want to see me talk about your favorite episode, yeah, keep checking back. I'll eventually get to it. And, you know, I'm going to try to make each of these videos as self-contained as possible. So, uh, yeah, uh, reportedly there will be a revival show of this on Disney+. Plus. So, yeah, decided to do all of these in preparation for that. And, yeah, you know, normally I just do, you know, each time I've watched an entire season, I'll do uh, one video talking about each episode. But, you know, what with my back problems, it works better for me to just, to more frequently sit for a sh shorter amount of time. So I'm doing this, you know, I'm doing an, a video per episode so that I can talk in greater detail uh, about each of them. And I'm going to, to try to, you know, yeah, basically discuss every single thing that I, you know, find particularly pertinent about the best Saturday morning cartoon, you know, before the Clone Wars came out. So yeah, let's dive right in. Love the intro. Amazing theme. Just like, I mean, who doesn't? I, I don't think you even have to, like, there's probably people who have no interest in the rest of the show who still like, okay, that's a, that's a bop. I'm you know, not, not gonna lie. And I love the way that it shows off all the, you know, all the major main characters and their powers. So, like, you know, kids' eyeballs, not necessarily the most, <clears throat> the most easy to get or retain. So you'll want to have something that really pops. And boy, does this opening pop, you know. Yeah, you, you, get, you get their names, you get their powers, you know, an indication of their powers, not every single little detail. You know, but enough that most people, you know, like, if you if you manage to watch this entire intro, and at no point are you like, I want to I wanna see that character in action. I don't want to only see them in this intro. Yeah, the show's just not for you. You know, that's pretty, you know, well, you might still enjoy the, the you know, the commentary, the social commentary it has. So we open on Sabretooth, who's like randomly destructive, which fair. That's that's so at least some of the comics he is just like he's 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 a chaotic force in, in Wolverine's life, and that's uh, yeah. And yeah, we get the detail about the mutant registry. And I forget if the show does, I appreciate that the movie does actually have, you know. Dis a little bit of discussion about it, and the, you know, there's, you know, obviously it is being led by people who have evil intent in, in the movie, but, you know, I, I guess at this point in the show we don't know, so I'll, I won't talk about that just yet. And, yeah, you know, they are deceptively good at arguing for it, which is a good message, because, you know, young people need to realize just because something sounds good, you know, dig deeper. You know, it's, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't believe when you hear people make something that sounds like a good case, but just dig deeper. Uh, you know, do your own research. As you know that, and and I mean that by the old meaning, not not the thing of like if you don't like COVID, you know, mandates and such. Just Google until you find someone who's crazy enough to say that. COVID, to, to spread COVID misinformation, anyway, and, you know, heartbreaking when, when Jubilee's father says, you know, 
I hope our neighbors don't find out. And I, you know, he does follow it up with, you know, it is, it's not quite as bad as it sounds at first, but still, yeah. And I appreciate that the Sentinels are clearly a fascist tool. They don't stop crime. In fact, there's a, you know, in when when it goes to the mall, which you know, it's America. Everyone goes to the mall. It actually, like, I, I. I guess it's possible that also just doesn't realize, but there's a guy who appears to be like shoplifting and like it doesn't even register because he's not a mutant. And you know, it's it's not like oof, Jubilee seems like she's dangerous. No, it's just, you know, well, I've, I've been told to, so I guess I'm gonna go arrest her. You know, it even ignores other mutants, you know, and yeah, you know, fascist tools don't ask. They just do what they're told. And we have the... Let's see. Yeah, we, we see some anti-mutant, uh, you know, bias when, you know, fair enough, she breaks the machine, and then she, you know, do you know what this machine cost? A quarter. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it, he didn't need to go there. He didn't need to make... He didn't, you know, the... the um, like, the fact that she's a mutant doesn't, you know, he's acting like every mutant is always destructive. And that is, you know, that's misinformation that's often used against minorities. You hear a lot, you know, there's a lot of conservative white people who think that if you're not white, uh, you know, and more recently, if you're not conservative, you must inherently be dangerous. And let's see... And and I really appreciate you know the the, the I, I like the bit with the cop you know do something what do you want me to do arrest him <laughs> and the the you know the sentinel says I am here to help which yeah you know if someone tells you that and you're a young person look at who's saying it look at if they are you know yeah look at their actions not only their words and. I really love like Gambit's introduction with the with the cards. You know, he's he's going in there as like, oh, you know, cards, and and she's like, so you like to play cards? I play solitaire, unless I got. I'm I'm not gonna do the accent. I, I definitely can't do it justice. I like to play solitaire unless I got some someone to play with, and that's such a great like. It is it is very flirty, you know, and it's a great like. Smooth like oil. That is that is slick, you know. But it does also, you know, someone to play with, and you know, kind of suggests he's maybe not the most stable partner, you know. And yeah, that is something that, yeah, very 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 true of the the character. So as, uh, at least in the comics, I I don't completely remember. I feel like that's the thing in the in the show as well. And, uh, yeah, um, really great action. I really love how everyone gets to use their powers. No one's just, like, standing around, you know. And just like in the movies, you know, I, I forget if this happened in the comics. It's been, like, a decade since I opened an X-Men book. Uh, you know, but, the, but it's, you know, to be clear, I did actually read the one I put behind me. It's not just their you know, background. Uh, but but yeah the the um, it is a yes uh, yeah yeah storm and rogue get you know thrown away so that someone else can help you know first gambit and then he gets temporarily taken out and I really love uh, you know Jubilee's line I didn't ask for this you know and that's something that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to minority groups you know they didn't ask to be the way they are and you know there a, a lot of conservatives will judge them as if they have a choice in the matter and in some cases you know maybe they have a choice but they shouldn't have to you know yeah not live their truth and yeah so you know jubilee wakes up in the the x mansion and I, I have to Im imagine that this next portion of the episode legit just inspired the movie because it's like, 
you know, swap Jubilee for Logan, and it's the same thing. You know, wakes up, gets out of the, the that first room, you know, runs past, yeah, runs down a, a hallway, and every so often she'll, you know, the, there's, yeah, almost encountering, you know, various mutants, and then ending up getting an explanation of what the place is like. I quite like the, you know, Jubilee, like, basically, sometimes she loses control and can do damage, and that is a good metaphor. Not quite as good as in the, I, I do prefer the movies, gotta say, you know, Rogue not being able to come into direct contact, that's an amazing metaphor for, you know, the, the teenage experience and, you know, being a member of a minority group. But yeah, the the idea of Jubilee basically, you know, she can't control. She didn't mean to destroy the VCR, for example. Holy crap, I wonder how many people watching this this episode in this vlog even remember what VCRs are. But yeah, you know, it is yeah, it's a good metaphor for teenagers. No, not only teenage girls. And yeah, I, I really appreciate that, like, you know, if you rewatch once you know that these are not, like, bad guys, you know, yeah, then, then you know. But for a while, like, Jubilee is walking past, and it's like, you know, she does she barely knows mutants. She, she only recently became one herself, and now she's, you know, she's passing this guy who's, like, changing into, you know, the, the people he sees on TV. And, you know, passing Beast, who's talking about, you know, oh, this, this stuff could blow up. That would be fun. You know, all the, the, these kinds of just, you, you get why she's, she's upset. And it's a little while before she sees someone she knows. I really appreciate that detail. You know, and once she sees Gambit, it's like, oh, finally, someone I, you know, because she trusts him and he earned that. And, you know, when the... The line, you know, Xavier, which Jubilee clearly hears, she's trying to escape. You know, that sounds threatening, but once you realize he's trying to protect her from the big robots, that's also, you know, she's like, I mean, how do I know that these guys are not as bad or worse, maybe even allied with the robo the giant robots, you know. And that's also, that's a great way to get kids' eyeballs Giant robots, you know, it's, you know, I, if I recall in the comics, the giant robots are, like, in the dystopian future, they're not in the present day, but, you know, it's a, it's a Saturday morning cartoon, you, you can do a little, it's, yeah, it's, and it's fun, like, I don't, who doesn't love a giant robot? And the, let's see, I mean, not every giant robot, I have absolutely no interest in the Michael Bay Transformer movies, and that's because I've watched other Michael Bay movies. But but yeah, you know, she's trying to escape. Sounds threatening. Once you realize he's literally saying, you know, if she gets, if she leaves the mansion, they're going to take her. And that is what happens at the end of the episode. You know, you can understand why he uses, or, or I guess not the end, but yeah, later in the episode, you can understand why, you know, escape is not necessarily, uh, you know, it sounds negative, but, like, we also talk, you know, if there's a fire, you use the fire escape. Like, no one's, you know, nobody says, I can't use the fire escape. Escape is a threatening word. No, it, it, it can be neutral or even positive. You know, some, some things you want to escape, sometimes you want to escape to somewhere, no, and and you know the the danger room so amazing. Love to see it. Better depiction of it than in any of the movies. And uh, you know, I I think the MCU can address that. I think they can make it work. But yeah, um, and I forget. Did they mean for the danger room? I know it was supposed to be in the second movie, and like they felt like story reason wasn't quite there. You know, by then they had already done the the teaser trailer. Which now makes no sense. You know, if you don't know that it was that was supposed to be the danger room, you know, you watch the teaser trailer and it's like, what? The, did, did I click on the wrong X Men two? You know, is is there more than one? 
but the the yeah danger room looks amazing just like in the comic and it's great to see it animated you know it's it just it it already pops on the page but seeing it in in motion amazing and yeah you know she gets in there and you know she sees gambit and it's this oh the you know the guy who tried to keep me safe because he didn't you know he did that because it was the right thing to do he didn't do that because he was trying to get something in return you know the yeah he sees a mutant who's scared and and running for her life and he helps her you know he, like he puts himself in danger for her so of course she trusts him and Wolverine you know he's like you know getting the claws out and he's like I forget exactly the, the words he says, but it sounds very threatening of Gambit. And then once you realize, no, no, they were just, like, sparring. It was, a, it was a game. You know, yeah. People sparring, like, you know, if you're, if you're like, boxing, sparring for boxing or some kind of martial art or something, yeah, you might say something that sounds very threatening, but, like, you're not actually intending to hurt the other person. But dude's got blades, you know, and and you know it is a dangerous room. So so yeah, she of course thinks, and it is also a, a great like it like like in the first movie, you know, they make they they introduce Wolverine being threatening, but then you know we we do see you know because like if he was like just as much of. You know, like, if you just look at his appearance, he, he can look fairly threatening, you know, which, you know, teenage boys around the world love about him. But when it comes to this thing of, you know, like, there's this teenage girl, like, you know, if he was a real a-hole, yeah, he'd be, like, he'd be verbally abusing her for the rest of the episode. You know, he, he'd be really, really awful when, you know... But he's not, because that's not, he's not, you know, well, I guess, do they share a lot of screen time for the rest of the episode? Anyway, you know, yeah, right after, like, you know, people are laughing at him, and he's not like, you better watch yourself, Jubilee. You know, he's just, yeah, he's, you know, he's perfectly fine. He didn't get injured or anything. And it's just like, you know, okay, that's, you know, and, and that's the, yeah, that's the ideal. You know, it's, uh, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, once she gets uh, abducted, you know, they talk about, you know, there's all these registration files in the building. So we get them and we shred them. And it's a great, because, like, we, the audience, know by this point in the episode, registration files, that's mutants who've done nothing wrong. And in some cases, you know, it's not, they, they weren't registered for doing something wrong. They were registered by people who trusted the government to do the right thing. And that's another important message for the audience. You know, you can't always trust your government. You know, ideally, you should be able to. But again, you know, do some research, find out, is this law protecting people or is it oppressing people? And yeah, really, really love that they managed to, to get that in there. You know, because, like, at the end of the, you know, I, I rewatched the Nostalgia Critic video on these first two episodes, and he does point out, I mean, it's terrorism, you know, they're going to break into a government building, and, and, yeah. And that's another really important message, you know, sometimes you have to, sometimes breaking the law is actually the right thing to do, is the ethical thing to do. So, yeah, really appreciate that. You know, it's very important that younger audiences learn, you know, just because you see a member of a minority doing something that's illegal, that doesn't mean that they are bad people. There might be a good reason for them to do it. And, uh, you know, the Gambit is about to attack Wolverine, and he's like, ah, he's not worth it. Is there ever a piece of fiction where someone actually says, worth it, you know, th th this person is worth it, and then go fight them, I don't know, I just feel like that would be a fun subversion, it's always, you know, not worth it, and uh, yeah, I appreciate the interpersonal conflicts, uh, interpersonal relationships, sometimes conflicts, between all the, uh, yeah, all the major characters, and the, uh, every X-Man on the mission uses their power as well, 
you know, no one is just, like, there, because they, you know, they paid for that actor, so let's bring him in, even if we can't think of anything particularly interesting for them to do. Let's, let's put them in the background, and, and that'll, that'll be good. You know, liter literally every single, you know, Morph distracts the guard by transforming his appearance. Beast climbs over and disables, and I, I love his little line, are any of us ever truly secure? And the, you know, Wolverine sniffs out the, 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 um, yeah, lasers, you know, and then Storm makes them visible. You know, if, if Wolverine wasn't there, Storm, you know, what, is Storm just gonna make mist in every single room they go into? You know, that's kind of ridiculous. So, just, yeah, um... I guess that is all of them, and, you know, great cliffhanger, like, you gotta s see what happens next, you know, I, I have a hard time imagining there's pretty much anyone who watched this episode and like, nah, I'm not gonna tune in next week, same time, same channel, that's just not, you know, it was, it was okay, but I don't really need to see, no, no, that's, ev everybody had to see what happens next and yeah, that's the, the first episode, so yeah, um, you know, if if I manage to keep up the schedule of one per day, you might be able to predict, you know, when I get to your favorite episode, and yeah, that's, yeah, make my marvel.